Hi, I'm Marlene Klatt. And I'm Beth Lissick. We're the co-founders of the Porchlight Storytelling Series in San Francisco. And we're here today at City Lights Bookstore. We're going to read from Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. It's a new translation by Lydia Davis. And um, we like this book. Well, they didn't like this book back in the old days because it challenged a lot of... The old old times? Yes, the old... <laughs> the days of yore. Because um, it, it upset public morality. That's right. Yeah, and Flaubert went to trial about this, and then eventually it was published as, as it should have been. I, we have kind of responded to it. It's about a, a housewife who's never satisfied with anything. Arlene. Well, I respond to it. That is <laughs> never satisfied with everything. <laughs> okay, ready? This Here we go. This is a beautiful passage. I love this part. Okay. Never had Madame Bovary been as lovely as she was during this time. Hers was the indefinable beauty that comes from joy, enthusiasm, success, and that is nothing more than a harmony of temperament and circumstances. Her desires, her sorrows, her experience of pleasure, and her ever youthful illusions had had the same effect as manure, rain, wind, and sun on a flower, developing her by degrees, and she was at last blooming in the fullness of her nature. Her eyelids seemed shaped expressly for those loving, long glances in which her pupils would disappear, while a heavy sigh would widen her delicate nostrils and lift the fleshy corners of her lips, shadowed in the light by a faint dark line of down. Some artist, skilled in depravity, might have arranged the coil of her hair over the nape of her neck. It was looped in a heavy mass, carelessly, according to the chance dictates of her adulterous affair, which loosened it every day. Her voice, now, took on softer inflections. Her body, too, Something subtle and penetrating emanated, even from the folds of her dress and the arch of her foot. Charles, as in the early days of his marriage, found her delicious and quite irresistible. I have got chills from me reading. Um, when he returned home in the middle of the night, he did not dare wake her. The porcelain nightlight cast a trembling round glow on the ceiling, and the closed curtains of the little cradle formed a sort of white hut that rose up in the darkness by the side of the bed. Charles gazed at them. He thought he could hear the shallow breath of his child. She would be growing now. Each season would quickly bring another advance. He could already see her coming home from school at the close of the day, wreathed in laughter, her little blouse spotted with ink, carrying her basket on her arm. Then she would have to be sent to boarding school. That would cost a good deal. How would they do it? He pondered this. He thought he might rent a small farm in the area, which he would oversee himself every morning on his way to visit his patients. He would save the income, he would put it in a savings bank, then he would buy some shares somewhere, it didn't matter where. In addition, his clientele would increase. He was counting on that because he wanted Bertha to be well brought up, accomplished, learn to play the piano. Ah, how pretty she would be later when she was 15, when she would resemble her mother and like her wear large straw hats in summer. From a distance, people would take them for two sisters. He pictured her working in the evening near them in the lamplight. She would embroider a pair of slippers for him. She would look after the household. She would fill the whole house with her sweetness and gaiety. Eventually, they would think of getting her settled. They would find her some decent boy with a solid profession. He would make her happy. It would last forever. A selection of Madame Bovary. Thank you.